our next speaker is, is uh, Dr. Young, who um, comes from uh, Georgia Tech, working in Alex uh, Gray's uh, fast lab. And uh, he'll be uh, speaking about um, uh, SVN and um, some non smooth immunizations. So, hopefully, this gets going. Thanks for the introduction and uh, good morning. Um, uh, welcome to my talk. And, um, and my name is Zafar Ong Yang, and uh, I'm a PhD student of uh, Dr. F. Gray, and uh, we are from Georgia Tech. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a new lesson for the uh, gas minimization of the uh, non smooth functions. Uh, now, for the uh, non smooth functions, we mean the uh, non smooth in the loss functions. Um, so, uh, let's start from a very simple uh, randomized algorithm, uh, which is the, called the stochastic gradient descent algorithm. And the, the FGD is, uh, is very popular in um, lots of communities. Uh, people have used it uh, from the 50s. And uh, it is a very uh, simple randomized, randomized algorithm. And uh, uh, the machine learners have uh, used it for uh, very large scale problems. And it, it was proposed by Robbins uh, and Moreau in the 50s. It is pretty old axiom, but it is, it, it is extremely fast. And uh, there are many variations of, of FGD. Say, if you have proposed the average FGD or adaptive subtype FGD, but uh, it turns out that uh, still the, oh, the, the classic FGD is, is still hard to beat. And um, FGD has been a uh, uh, applied to many machine learning applications, such as uh, SVM classification and regression, and uh, uh, cross, uh, signal uh, reconstruction neural nets. It turns out that perception is an instance of the uh, SGD axiom. Um, the good thing about the SGD axiom is that it does not need to go through the uh, entire data set. Um, so it is uh, memory efficient, and it, it is very good for large scale um, and sequential data. Um, another good thing about the SGD is that the theoretical guarantee in SGD is in is in terms of the uh, expectations. So, despite all these um, good properties of FGD, it is inherently a black box action. So, that means that it does not explore any structure of your problem. Uh, the rule of thumb is that if you want to achieve a better result in uh, machine learning applications, um, the good way to go is just to um, explore the structure of your problem um, to the extreme extent. So in this work, we propose a so-called accelerated non-smooth stochastic gradient descent, or NSGD, by supporting the structure of our objective functions. And uh, we give name the we, we give the, the name A in SGD, but actually it's not in SGD, as we'll see later. Um, and and, and, and we're, we're sure that it is theoretically and uh, empirically better than all the A. Previous subgradient sub descent based algorithms. Um, now I, I, I'll give you a, a, a very quick review of the state of the art um, stochastic algorithms. So the oldest one is the, the oldest one is the SGD, and it has a very simple um, uh, update rule. Here is the key is a uh, step size, and this uh, is the uh, subgradient if a function is non-smooth. And uh, another one is the recent proposed stochastic dual averaging, and this method is essentially has a pretty much similar component of the FGD. And also, if you have used the average uh, result of the previous solutions to do the final prediction, and this is called average FGD, it's also good enough under some uh, uh, assumptions. Um, and another thing is the ACSA is the, is the accelerated stochastic approximation uh, recently proposed by Len. 
uh, this method uh, utilized the Nesterov's accelerated grading method, and uh, it was originally proposed for smooth functions. But actually, it can be used for minimizing non-smooth functions. But I, I need to mention that for all these methods, if you, if you want to use these methods for the uh, non-smooth minimi minimization problems, and I mean for minimizing non-smooth loss functions, you have to resort to using subgradients. Now, there are some lower bounds uh, here shown for the uh, for this for this uh, stochastic uh, stochastic optimization algorithm. And this bound is the lower bound for the general for, for minimizing general convex functions, and this is bound for minimizing the uh, strongly convex uh, functions. But actually, these two lower bounds are not very interesting because um, it does not distinguish um, the estimation error from optimization error. And, and also, these two bounds are of the same order as the lower bound of uh, the estimation error. So we will see that it turns out that the, the constant here really matters. And, or, or you can just uh, have a fine-grained fine -grained bound, which is a sum of two parts. One is the estimation error, another is the optimization error. And uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see that for all these subgrading descent-based algorithms, the optimization error is still of the same order as the estimation error. And uh, it is our. It is by our smoothing method that we can just accelerate uh, accelerate the um, optimization error to a faster rate, other than the uh, slow rate of the estimation error. We'll, we'll, we'll give some detailed discussions about this in the uh, next several slides. So, the uh, the key ingredients of uh, of this work are two things. One is the stochastic, uh, stochastic setting, and another thing is the uh, non smoothness. So, first, I will talk about the uh, stochastic uh, optimization view of machine learning. Uh, so, from a uh, frequency point of view, um, supervised learning is like minimizing some kind of uh, a Fact is a loss function, and this task is a subtask of this stochastic optimization. So, for for, for the uh, for the optimization community or stochastic optimization community, people have uh, proposed two general classes of uh, methods for solving stochastic uh, um, uh, optimization problems. Why is the sample average approximation SAA? And actually, this is to minimize the uh, empirical risk uh, function. Uh, empirical risk function. And it's uh, almost the same as the so-called batch learning. And second thing, the, the second method is called stochastic approximation, which we are adopting in, in this in this uh, work. So, actually, this uh, this method directly minimizes the expected expected risk function by taking the samples. So, SGD is a kind of instance of this stochastic approximation. And uh, the online learning or online convex optimization is uh, are algorithmic, uh, algorithmically related to, to, to this SA. So a, a general idea here is that, as shown by the two, the generation error that we care about can be decomposed into three parts, approximation error, estimation error, and optimization error. So if you have a fixed model, then we have little control about the approximation error, so we need to care about the the, the trade-off between the estimation error and optimization error. The good thing about this gap of approximation is that the guarantee, the theorem, the guarantee of uh, SA are in terms of the sum of these two terms. Now, let's come to the other uh, to the to the other uh, ingredient of our work that is the non-smoothing. Uh, in our object functions. So, um, actually, in machine learning, many problems can be boiled down to non smooth uh, minimization problems, such as, uh, uh, for example, if, we, if you are focusing on the, um, on the empirical risk minimization, which is the uh, sum of a uh, empirical loss function plus some regular, regularization term, you can see that both of these two terms could be non convex, uh, non smooth. But both of them are convex, but both of them could be non-smooth. For example, um, uh, for the loss function f, the hinge loss, absolute loss, absolute intensive loss are all 
uh, <coughs> nice smooth. And for the evaluation part, the uh, one norm, infinite norm, uh, blue plus or um, nuclear, nuclear norm are just all uh, non uh, smooth. So you might ask why bother using non smooth functions? Um, the answer is that it, it, it has many uh, favorable uh, properties. Uh, for example, in the hinge loss, it can lead to very sparse uh, SVM classifiers. And people have shown that uh, hinge loss is uh, statistically better than any other um, smooth uh, loss functions for classification tasks. And also, there are many other um, uh, favorable properties. Um, but uh, the question here is that the problem here is that the notion of optimization is inherently hard. It has been proved by Nimrovsky that in the worst case, the iteration complexity of minimizing non-smooth functions, for minimizing general non-smooth functions could be order one over f of square, meaning that it has a very slow rate of one over root t if you if you if you run your uh, if you if you run your argument for t iterations. So it is generally hard, but if you have a very uh, good structure in your object function, then it will give you some hope. Um, now, the question here is that what kind of uh, favorable uh, structures we want to explore? Uh, as we mentioned before, SDG does not in explore any um, structure in your program. It, it just depends on the first order information that is subgraded in the object function. Um, uh, so we are focusing on the uh, sum of the uh, loss function and uh, the generation term. So if you want to explore the uh, structure in the generation term, there has been lots of work on that, uh, assuming that your, 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 your regularization term is, has a very simple form. So this technique is called splitting or composite setting, and uh, the idea is to minimize the first, first of all, the order of transformation of, uh, of, your, of your loss function plus a, 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 a uh, recommended versions plus the uh, very simple and structured non-smooth realization term. Um, well, but this the, the, this method uh, uh, relies on the assumption that your loss function is smooth. But what if uh, your, your loss function is, is non-smooth? So our assumption here is that we are, we are hoping that our loss function has a very nice equivalent Convex concave set of point form of this one. Here, u is an auxiliary, um, uh, auxiliary variable. So there are many examples uh, showing that the machine learning applications can be turned into uh, this form. Say, for example, the uh, minim uh, minimize the maximum of error functions can be uh, turned into this, uh, into this set of point form, and uh, minimizing the p norm. Um, Regression problem can be can be also turned into this form, subject to the uh, to, to the constraint that uh, u is uh, constrained in the u norm. So we have uh, uh, made the assumption that our problem can be turned into this uh, set of point form. But what's the benefit of you, of of, uh, of uh, using this set of point form? Now, the answer there are several answers to the, to this question. So Nimrovsky's answer to this, to this question is that we assume that the set point uh, function is smooth uh, with, with respect to x with fixed u, and it is smooth with respect to u with fixed x. So based on this uh, assumption, we can use the so-called set point mirror descent to achieve a, a faster rate than the subgrading descent methods. Another uh, answer to this question is the Nastroff's uh, deterministic smoothing method. And this method assumes that uh, we can approximate our equivalent set point form by a smooth function, a smooth approximated function of the original function. And we assume that the approximate function is a simple to solve. So in, in, in the machine, in, in, as, we show, in, uh, as we have seen before, in many machine learning programs, um, the non-smooth losses can be turned into this set point form, and we can have a deterministic smoothing of our uh, loss function. So here, this, this equation gives the uh, 
uh, gives the uh, definition of a natural uh, deterministic smoothing. Um, you can see that without these terms, the first two terms are equivalent to the original uh, loss function. And it is with this term that we can have a smooth approximation of the original loss function f. And the intuition here is, um, OK, here omega is a <laughs> strongly convex, non-negative function. And gamma here is called a smoothing parameter. It's non-negative sm uh, smoothing parameter. So the intuition, intuition here is that gamma should not be should be should be a very small number so that the approximation is not far away from the original function. Now the limitation of this method is that one has to uh, know the um, number of iterations you want to run beforehand, and this is not suitable for stochastic programming or online learning. Well, you do not need the how many number of uh, iterations you want to run beforehand. So based on this. Um, Intuition: We propose a stochastic smoothing of our of our loss function, and um, this is the definition of the stochastic uh, smoothing. And you can see that it only diff and, and differs from the deterministic smoothing in two parts. One part is the linear operator a here, a, and a here is uh, is a um, a, stochastic, a stochastic term, and it is related to your simple psi p. And another thing is that it has a a a a, a time varying uh, smooth uh, smoothing uh, smoothing uh, this parameter gamma t, and both of these two terms change change uh, change with time. So uh, as we will see that it is uh, very crucial to find a cru a, a proper series uh, gamma t to ensure a fast rate of convergence. Now this two uh, now we give uh, some properties of this uh, smooth uh, smooth this, uh, approximation. So, all right, uh, I'll skip this one and go back to the uh, directly to the axiom. And then this axiom is actually a a, a direct of, of uh, a direct application of the uh, Nesterov's accelerated gradient descent together with the uh, our stochastic smoothing. And you can see that the first the Line one, three, and four are, are almost the same form as the accelerated gradient, but uh, and it can be simplified to a equivalent but uh, simpler uh, axis. So here is the, our main result, and um, the interesting part is the is here we have the uh, one over t bound for the non-smooth part, <laughs> and for the uh, strongly convex function we can have the asymptotically. Uh, Totally, you can have one over t squared bound for the non-smooth part. So here we compare the uh, the bound for uh, of, uh, any SGD with uh, ACSA and, and the SGD. You can see that the third term here are the uh, are the estimation errors, and uh, for these two, the uh, the non-smooth part has the, is the is the same order as the estimation error. But uh, for our axiom, it is the faster than the the estimation error, and also it is the case. For the strongly convex um, um, cases, it is the uh, order uh, one over t squared, uh, other than one over t. So the byproduct we have shown that we have a proposed a batch to online conversion, and here are some examples of the uh, uh, smooth approximation of the hinge loss and the absolute uh, absolute loss. Here the approximation of the lower bounds of the. Uh, Original loss function, and we have uh, shown empirical results uh, uh, comparing with the average SGD and the uh, original SGD, and uh, it outperforms these two um, separate descent based axes uh, in all of in, in, in most of the data we have chosen. And uh, the only exception is the, this data set is the data set alpha, and um, it has a higher um, function value, but uh, it has a contradictory. Uh, Contradictively lower testing accuracy. Maybe it is due to the um, incomplete optimization, and it cannot be predicted uh, pre predicted by our uh, theory. And also, we uh, compare our, our axiom with the state of our ACSA axiom, and we, we can see that it also outperforms the ACSA by a large margin. 
and uh, okay, I think uh, I think that's the end of my talk. And then I'll leave time for questions. Thank you. Huh? All right. So the conclusion here is that um, we have extended our uh, we have uh, introduced a a different company. Company setting, we, 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 we are focusing on the uh, non smooth loss, uh, minimizing the non smooth functions other than the non smooth uh, regularization term. And uh, we have proposed a very simple stochastic uh, smoothing uh, method, and uh, together with the uh, Nesterov accelerated gradient, we, we propose the uh, NSGD. And uh, actually, this action achieved the near, um, nearly optimal rate under both convex and strongly convex uh, assumptions of your. Uh, of your loss functions. And as a, as a byproduct, we propose a batch to online conversion, and we can show that almost any uh, good stochastic algorithm can be used for online learning. And so there, are some, uh, there are several ways to extend our work, try to extend our, to constraint minimizations, and we try to find more interesting and harder applications. And, uh, and also, we, 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 we try to solve problems where the uh, approximate function is not easy to solve in a closed form. And also, we are thinking about uh, parallelize uh, the NFGD and what is the optimal bit and mini batch size. Then, the, if you can step aside the NFGD with a simple average, like the an average the FGD I've done. Right? That's the end. Okay. Thanks. Everyone, let's take questions. So uh, this averaging always seems to help. Um, have you ever played around with sort of decaying averaging, or in, where you take the most recent, the recent ones at higher weight? Uh, I didn't do an experiment on that, but the a simple averaging over the all the previous uh, solutions give a pretty decent solution, which is uh, the average FGD as we have seen in the experimental results here. The uh, green line is the average as, average FGD. It is a uh, descent. It is pretty good, close to our solution. Yeah. Uh, so could we go back there uh, a minute here, please? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you seem to suggest that uh, because you're taking advantage of the structure, you're able to go past what the lower bound suggests. Yeah. Uh, which seems kind of inaccurate to me because the lower bounds that you refer to actually have a sigma over root t yeah. uh, lower bound that they prove, which is exactly what the upper bound you're proving here. So I, I'm unable to see how you're going past the lower bound. Okay, let's let's take a look at the comparison here. The FGD has three terms. That's an upper bound. That's not a lower bound. Yes, exactly, but. My argument here is that the lower bound is not really a tight lower bound. It's, uh, it's, your algorithm is not going any further than what the lower bound yeah. can be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's sigma over root t, sure. which is uh, what, what you're showing there. So we, we are not claiming that we, we, can, we, can, we can do a 1 over t other than 1 over root t here, because this is the dominating part, right? This is the estimation error, right? And but we include this 1 over root t to 1 over t. This is the key contribution of this work. Right, but that term is not present in the lower bound at all. So for all we know, that term might not even need to be there at all. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, you're uh, not beating the lower bound in any way. You're still worse off compared to the lower bound. And it would be theoretically very problematic if you were able to actually beat the lower bound. Well, my, 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 my answer is that this is the lower bound for estimation error. And there must be a lower bound for the optimization error. Right. Uh, we, can, we can take it offline. The, the lower bounds are for optimization sure. error. All right. OK. Let's check offline. Thank you. Any other questions? OK, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Time for coffee break. Uh, we'll return.